Alex here with another review, and this time we're taking a look at the Launch X431 Pro V5, which is an advanced wireless bidirectional scanner, which has the capabilities of activating components on the vehicle, as well as accessing service functions, typically dealer level type of stuff, and it also has the ability to interface to older vehicles that do not use the OBD2 port with the included adapter kit. So first we'll take a look at the contents of the kit, then I'll walk you through the features of the scanner, including the live data stream function. And I'm also gonna show you the vehicle coverage list. That way you can check if your vehicle make is supported by the scan tool. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I place a link in the description down below to the scanner in case you wanna look at it further or acquire one for yourself. And the case feels nice and heavy duty, including these latches right here on the top. And this is case one out of two, primarily containing the scanner on this side. And it is surrounded by this very nice dense foam, which is good to protect the scanner when it's not being used or we're traveling with it. Taking a closer look at the scanner, we get an eight inch touchscreen, front facing camera, and the scanner is surrounded by a hard case, which is gonna be good for drop protection. Also notice that this side right here is a little bit thicker, and that is to allow the scanner to be held with one hand. However, most of the time I recommend holding it with both hands. And on this side, you get two dust covers. The very first one reveals a full size USB port and the second one reveals a USB-C port. Moving to the top, you got the power button and it's a good size too. That way you can get to it when you're wearing mechanic gloves. And moving to the back of the unit, we get the rear facing camera. The opposite side is separated by these little latches and inside of here we have more accessories let me show you a closer look first off we get the vehicle interface connector and this is wireless allowing us to connect to our obd2 port on this side and the cable is removable from the vci which can allow for easy replacement if it ever works out and also allows for this to reach into tighter areas in the vehicle and notice on the vci on the bottom there is a dust cover and that reveals a usb-c port and finally it does have indicators on both sides that way you can confirm what the adapter is doing at any point in time and we get the power adapter usb-c connector and three replaceable face plates that way we can use adapter in different parts of the world and a usb-c cable second case includes the adapters for anything else that is not standard basically not a obd2 port let's take a closer look at each one and starting off with this one's the first adapter is going to be for ford and you can see what the connector looks looks like if you want to compare it to the one on your vehicle. Again, these are not going to be needed if you have a vehicle that already supports OBD2. These adapters are only needed if you have an older vehicle that may have a proprietary connector. This one right here happens to be for GM and Voss. And the next adapter right here is for Kia. And you can see on there again what that connector will looks like. Moving up to the top, we get Toyota adapter and you can see what that looks like. This is a 17 pin adapter. Next one is again Toyota, but now this is for a 22 uh, diagnostic connector. And the next one is going to be for Honda, and this is a three pin adapter. You can see that's on there. Moving over to this side, we get Chrysler right here. And if I remember correctly, I had to use this one for my older Jeep. So it definitely comes in handy to have this style of adapters to use with modern scanners. This one right here is for BMW, quite fancy looking. And then this bad boy right here is for Mercedes Benz. Moving over to the other side, we get one more adapter for Benz, but this one is for a 14 pin connector. We get one adapter for Mitsubishi and Hyundai. And then we get this adapter right here for Nissan. And in case you're curious to see how the adapters work, here is the VCI I showed you earlier. And on this side, that is the standard OBD2 connector. And this can separate now, allowing us to connect one of the adapters in here so we can interface to a proprietary connector. But also notice that you have this power input. And the reason for it is that most proprietary connectors need to have power injected into them. They don't have power the way that OBD2 supplies power. And that can be done with this included automotive adapter this gets plugged in in here and now it supplies power to the proprietary connector or it could also be done with the second cable that they have included and typically these guys right here are 
are connected to the battery terminals of the vehicle, supplying power to proprietary connectors. And the first thing we want to do before starting to use this is to update the software. Now, this particular scanner includes two years of updates, and the updates are listed right here. And the way it works, I could select individual updates with these check marks, or my preferred way, updating all by hitting the update button. And the first way to diagnose a vehicle is going to be with intelligent diagnose, which is the auto VIN function basically automatically recognizes your vehicle based on the VIN number. And we're given quite a bit of choices after the auto VIN function has identified the vehicle. Let's try the first one because that one is gonna run a full report on our vehicle and any issues it might have. And with the scan complete, you can see that there are four things that were came up on their tire pressure monitoring system, one that came up on their power source control, and another one that came up with the navigation system. The rest of the systems, as indicated by the green color, tested out as okay. And at this point, we could also create a report summary, or we can choose to clear all of them with the clear DTC option. Obviously, you would not want to do that unless the car has been fixed. And if you're not familiar with the particular issue that came up, you can tap on the search icon and that's basically going to Google that code for you. That way you can see if somebody else has found the solution. You could also go directly into the system that has the issue. It's going to describe that system for you. In this case, it's the tire pressure monitoring system. And here you can read the codes again, clear the codes, read data stream or access special functions. But going back to the screen right here, let's take a look at the second one that is system selection. Now, sometimes you may not want to spend a lot of time doing a full report of the vehicle. And here's where you can individually select the system that you want the scanner to scan and give you a report or in case you wanted to go inside of that system for anything such as potentially customizing the vehicle or getting access to activating components. This particular vehicle also has ADAS and the scanner does support ADAS calibration and that can be performed right here. Now let's take a look at service functions and this scanner supports quite a bit of them. Now not all vehicles support all service functions. In this particular vehicle, these are the service functions that are supported. And I'll show you a more complete list when we go back to the main menu of the scanner of all the service functions supported. But what's also pretty interesting is that we get that vehicle control history. And what this does, this is different than a normal scan looking for DTCs. Sometimes if the check engine line has been cleared, you may not see that there was an issue at some point in time. And with this, we are able to pull, if the vehicle supported, the entire history of things that happened and were recorded that are supported by the vehicle, again, as being a record or in the vehicle control history. Some functions can also be customized and that is done right here in customize setting. I'm gonna go hit OK over here. And again, this is gonna vary from vehicle to vehicle. In this particular vehicle, these are the functions that can be customized. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the engine. I'm gonna go inside of ECM. And the reason why we're going inside of ECM is so we can look at the advanced functions uh, such as reading live data, actuation text, and special functions. And let's go ahead and begin with live data. And as you can see these are the list of different parameters that are supported by this vehicle and i'm gonna go ahead and select all over here and i'm gonna hit ok and as you can see those results are coming live from the vehicle and i can keep scrolling down through here if i wanted to see those again coming from the vehicle in real time there's also a quick shortcut up here to change the units between metric and english let's take a look at rpm so i'm gonna give it some gas and if I type this icon, we can see it in a graphical format. And there is an arrow on this side and tapping that one allows us to combine multiple parameters. That way we can see them in the same graph. And if you wanted to see multiple graphs at the same time, that is done with this graph function. Now, this particular scanner supports up to eight of these parameters, each one on its own individual graph. You can also sample the data with this function. Here you tell the scanner what the vehicle is currently doing, and then it is now sampling data. Now, why would you want to sample data? Well, that is if you wanted to use that sample later on to compare it against another sample. And you could also create a report out of this information, or you can use the record function to record data, which can be convenient 
if you wanted to drive around while capturing data for later review. Next up is actuation test. And again, here you have a list that could potentially be quite long, especially if your vehicle is newer, it's gonna have a lot more supported items that you can control. And similarly with the special functions. The second way to diagnose the vehicle is with local diagnose. If you wanna manually tell the scanner what vehicle that you're working with. And here you can see the different makes that are supported by the scanner. Also notice that I can swipe on this bar on the top and we get this VIN scan option. And here you can use the camera to read the VIN of the vehicle, enter the VIN manually, or you can do common where you would add the most common makes you work with, or you could sort the list by region. And you can see in here how the different makes have been sorted out by these different region tabs. And while the X431 already includes TPMS functionality, you can gain additional advanced TPMS functions with the optional TPMS1, which can be paired to the scanner and then used with this module. Moving over to service functions, what we sometimes refer to as maintenance functions, there is an icon telling you kind of what it does pictorially, but also a description of the bottom, what it is. For example, that's AD Blue Reset, this one's ABS Bleeding, and I'll scroll through this list. That way you can see if the service function that you need is included in this scanner. And the scanner keeps track of the vehicles that you have tested on their diagnostic history. And the feedback option can be used to get tech support from launch. And remote diagnose can be used to allow a remote technician to remote into your tablet. The ADAS function is quite interesting because if you look at ADAS calibration, obviously this is going to require advanced ADAS support equipment in order to be able to calibrate the system and you can kind of learn about the ADAS and how that system works. It has this built-in product introduction, but also a full product manual on here. 64 pages on the, of information on how the ADAS calibration process can work if you have access to that equipment and also the steps required. And the mall icon can be used to extend the number of year of updates that you get included with the scanner. And under maintenance, this is almost like a library of technical documents that can be very very helpful when you are working on a vehicle. It definitely comes in handy. For example, if you were trying to do the calibration of the steering system on BMW, you can go on here and it's gonna walk you through those steps. Super convenient if you've never done it before or if you just need a refresher on it. Next up is DTC help. You may run into a diagnostic code that you may need help on or you may not have access to the service uh, manual for the vehicle and you can go in here and try to look for that and see if it's on here. They also have this tech handbook. Again, more information about a vehicle specifications and things that may help you as a service technician. On the repair case, I went in here, I only found three different brands and some of them are actually empty. There's nothing on here. There's probably gonna be stuff in there at some point in the future, but I think you could probably spend a lot of time just navigating through these different menus, finding different documentations to again, help you become better as a technician. Now, one thing I want to point out is that this documentation is not really built in onto the tablet. It downloads it off the internet on demand. So you do want to have internet access so it can download those different documents that are available to you. And under user info, here's where you have access to the advanced settings of the tablet. And these are things that are behind the scenes, such as setting the unit of measure, setting your shop information so it can come up on the reports and selecting your printer. And lastly, we get to other modules and we're going to take a look at toolbox first and these are different things that you can acquire for the scanner in case you wanted to again gain more capabilities such as the bluetooth battery tester additional advanced equipment for access to IMO programming, video scope, and a lot more. We also get an electronic version of the instruction manual for the scanner, also a screen recorder, calculator, and internet browser. Now this is a standard Chrome browser, so I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to YouTube to find a video so we can test the video and audio of this tablet. And let's try this video out. And in this video, I'm gonna 
going to show you what you get inside of this package when you purchase one of the Screeter 3001 OBD2 scan tools. And then I'm going to walk you through the different features of it to see if this is a scanner that will work for you. And as always, I have placed a link to this scanner in the description down below in case you'd like to get one. But now let's take a look at the Creator 3001 OBD. And finally, there's a shortcut to Gmail and the icon to access the camera. Convenient if you want to take some pictures or some video. And to see those videos or pictures that is done under the gallery option and to get behind the scenes of the tablet because remember this is based on android here's where you can get access to those to fully customize this and as you may have already noticed you get this go back icon and also this icon right here that allows you to take a screenshot and then this icon right here allows you to navigate between the different windows that are open again because this is very much like an android tablet and if you tap the home icon you can see behind the scenes and yes you could also swipe up and see the rest of the apps in that traditional android display format so as you saw a ton of capability on this scanner and also the ability to upgrade this in the future with advanced add-ons and i think if you're in a shop environment you will eventually use those adapters for vehicles that do not use an OBD2 port. Now, if you're not in a shop environment and you're getting this for your personal use, and if you don't have an older vehicle, you already know your car has an OBD2 port and no plans to buy an older vehicle, then you're probably gonna be able to save some money by getting a version of the scanner that does not include those adapters. And that version is called the Launch X431 Pro Elite. And it is also wired. It's not a wireless version like this, but again, you could potentially save money if you're not ever gonna need those adapters and get very close, if not almost the same features as what you saw on this guy right here. I'll put a link to both this scanner in the description down below and also a link to the Pro Elite. That way you can compare them and decide which is the one for you. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more scanner reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.